Neurological Disorders Lesson 2.2, How Do Our Neurons Signal Electrically? This is one of two lessons that introduces the action potential. This lesson is best for classes where students are unfamiliar with the concepts of diffusion, threshold, and the impermeability of the cell membrane. The second lesson, Lesson 2.2 Differentiated, contains more details about the action potential and is therefore more appropriate for classes where students have already mastered these concepts. That lesson will be covered in a separate video. You do not need to teach both of these lessons, you can just choose one that best suits your class. The goals of this lesson are to introduce the process by which our axons signal electrically, the action potential, and to explore the consequences of disrupting the action potential. At the end of this lesson, students should be able to describe the concept of threshold, that once inputs reach a certain point and action potential is fired, describe how sodium ions flow into the axon to create the action potential, and describe how novocaine works. We'll achieve these goals through a Socratic discussion and by modeling the action potential. To prepare for this session, you'll need to review the key scientific concepts that will be presented throughout it. And a word of caution, students find the scientific concepts presented in this lesson to be challenging, so it is imperative that you take some additional time to ensure that you understand these concepts to help guide your students. Those concepts are, the types, locations, and relationships between different neuronal signals, that dendrites generate electrical input signals, that axons generate electrical signals, and that presynaptic terminals generate chemical signals. Additionally, we'll talk about the creation and conduction of the action potential, the axon's electrical signal. This involves several key scientific concepts, including diffusion, impermeability of the cell membrane, ion channels, and threshold. You can review the scientific content in the background reading provided to you in the teacher primer, the teacher manual, and the student workbook. The teacher primer provides in-depth knowledge about the scientific content presented in this lesson. The teacher manual or lesson plan provides a minute-by-minute -minute explanation of lesson structure, including instructions on how to manage the discussion and activity. And the student workbook provides additional explanation for your students. You'll need to be sure to print the activity worksheets for your students. And before the lesson begins, you'll also need to prepare action potential model setups. You'll need one setup for each group of around three to four students. And it's easiest to package each in a Ziploc bag to save time during class. Each action potential model setup includes approximately 100 black beans and three blue toothpicks or pipe cleaners. The key point of the lessons due now is to engage students with the concept of neuronal signaling. We'll get there by brainstorming how Novocaine, the local anesthetic used for most dental procedures, works. After allowing students time to brainstorm and share their ideas, you'll animate slide two to show the students that Novocaine stops our neurons from signaling electrically, which will lead directly into our discussion. The key points of the discussion are to introduce the types of neuronal signals, including electrical signal down the axon and the chemical signal across the synapse. To discuss the creation and conduction of the action potential down the axon, which depends on the following key scientific concepts, you'll also discuss diffusion, impermeability of the cell membrane, ion channels, and threshold. We'll get to these key points with a Socratic discussion. The discussion starts with an introduction of the types of signals neurons send. Neurons signal chemically via synapses and electrically via axons. This lesson focuses on how neurons send electrical signals down their axons, and we'll focus on how neurons send chemical signals across their synapse in Unit 3. You'll use slide 4 to introduce students to the term action potential, to make sure that they know that's the name of the axon's electrical signal. The remainder of the discussion covers the details of how neurons create and conduct an action potential down their axons. Those details involve a review of diffusion, abstractly on slide number 5, and specifically of sodium ions, on slide number six. You'll also review the impermeability of cell membranes on slide number seven and the need for ion channels to allow ions to enter and exit the cell on slide number eight. Finally, you review threshold, first with the toilet flush analogy on slide number nine and then by applying that to neurons and the opening of sodium channels on slide number 10 and then applying that to the length of the axon on slide number 11. Sodium channels open like our toilets flush threshold needs to be reached, and then they open and an action potential fires. The toilets flush. This then triggers the next toilet to flush, or sodium channels open on down the length of the axon. Slide 11 is animated, so you can show each of these steps individually. 
The key point of the activity is to demonstrate the creation and conduction of the action potential down the axon and review the forces that govern that process, including the impermeability of the cell membrane, sodium ion channels, threshold, diffusion, and the movement of sp sodium ions. We'll get to these key points by modeling the action potential. In the activity, you'll have students work in small groups and give each of them an action potential model setup, which has the supplies for them to simulate the action potential using dried beans to represent sodium ions and toothpicks or pipe cleaners to represent the sodium channels. You'll also give each student an activity worksheet to guide them through the activity and help them focus on the most important details of the process. The worksheet has students take notes on those key points, which are, where are sodium ions at highest concentration when the axon is at rest? Which direction, into or out of the axon, do the sodium ions move after the first sodium channel reaches threshold and opens, and why? And how does the movement of the sodium ions change the charge inside the axon? After the students have had time to model the action potentials themselves, they'll come together as a class to review the entire process and using slide 13. This slide is also heavily animated, so you'll be able to walk through each step of the process with your students. A signal is received from another neuron. This triggers the first sodium channel to open. Because of diffusion, sodium ions enter the axon. They move down their concentration gradient from an area of high concentration outside the axon to an area of low concentration inside the axon. And then that entry of sodium ions makes the inside of the axon at that very small point more positive, which triggers the next sodium ion channel to open. And the process repeats itself. Also, two important notes here. First, for simplicity, this lesson does not discuss how the axon pumps the sodium ions out of the axon after firing an action potential. If students are curious, the answer is there's a pump in the membrane that literally pumps sodium back outside. The pump is also why there is much more sodium outside than inside when the membrane is at rest. And second, this lesson does not discuss how the action potential is converted into a chemical signal at the synapse. That process will be discussed in Unit 3. The key point of the wrap-up is to think about the effect of disrupting the action potential. We'll get to this key point by examining how Novocaine works. In the wrap-up, you'll revisit the question of how Novocaine works. Slide 14 shows students that Novocaine plugs the toilets, and slide 15 asks students what would happen if the sodium channels can't open. If the sodium channels can't open, then we can't send an action potential, and you won't feel any pain. The key point of the homework is to review the creation and conduction of the action potential down the axon. We'll get to this key point by completing activity worksheets. The activity worksheet is longer, so some students may need additional time to complete it. If students need help, they can read Lesson 2.2 in the workbook to review the steps of the action potential. A word of caution, though, the workbook contains all the details included within the differentiated version of this lesson. So if you're opting to use this version of the lesson with your students, you may want to warn them that their workbooks will have some additional details. Students are often challenged by the content in this lesson, so it is very important that you understand the concepts well so you can guide your students. You can find more in the Teacher Primer, Teacher Manual, and Student Workbook. After teaching the action potential, a question I like to ask my students is, what would happen if the sodium channels in your pain-sensitive neurons never reached threshold? This question mimics the Novocaine question by assisting student understanding the process and consequences of disrupting it, and has the added benefit of acting as a bridge to an actual patient disorder and video. The answer here is that you never feel any pain because if your sodium channels don't open, you can't fire an action potential. So regardless of how much pain you're in, a message would never get sent to the brain to tell you that you are in pain. And this does happen with people with congenital analgesia. One of the patients was profiled in a documentary called A Life Without Pain, and we'll discuss this patient and condition more in Lesson 2.5, but it is nice to introduce it here and show a clip of one of the many videos of it on YouTube, if time allows. At the end of this lesson, students should be able to describe the process by which our neurons generate and conduct an action potential down the length of the axon. They should also be able to predict the consequences of disrupting this process. An understanding of the action potential is important because it describes why myelination is important, which we'll discuss in the next lesson, and explains the causes of some of the disorders we'll discuss in Lesson 2.5. Additionally, the action potential is just one type of neuronal signal. It leads to synaptic signaling, which is the focus of Unit 3. Don't forget, if you have any questions, concerns, or feedback, to let us know. You can contact any of the CTSE team members, and we'd be more than happy to help you.